here guys and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, if you've been following my journey with my little John Cooper Works Mini Roadster here, aka Ruby, uh, you'll have known that uh, about a couple of months ago now I took her to the guys at Lowen and we put a Performance Pack 2 on the car, Stage 2 Remap. She's now running 270 horsepower and just a smidge under 400 newton meters of torque completely transformed the driving performance of the car. But a couple of weeks ago, I took her to the guys at the B-Road Hunting Club and we did some modifications to her suspension and wheels and aesthetics. And this video is all about what the new driving feel is like. So we've fitted racing coilovers, wider track tires and wheels, um, and a far, far more aggressive suspension setup. So stay tuned if you want to know what she's like to drive because not only in this video am I going to drive her on the road but I also got to drive her on track just a few days ago and well the difference was staggering. So before we take her out on the road, I thought you might just like me to highlight exactly what we did in terms of aesthetics and also suspension, because at the end of the video I made, we, we didn't have a great deal of time to go through the car. So I guess aesthetically, the biggest and most noticeable thing we've done is a complete D-chrome. So basically the uh, surrounds to the headlamps and the front grille, we've taken the chrome parts off and wrapped them in a gloss black vinyl. And I, I just, I've always wanted to do that and it kind of, completely changes the car for me as well. We've also done the belt line, so we've kind of got rid of that shiny chrome. Uh, going on the blacked out theme, uh, I also changed the mini badge. So this is uh, the badge from the new F56, but the old badge was, was very chromey. Um, since the last video, we did a couple of other minor tweaks. We put a, a slight tint on the fog lamps, and then the other big change for the front of the car, which again, I've wanted to do right from the get-go when I own this car, was these two red GP2 uh, brake duct scoops. I just think that that little bit of red accent matches in nicely with the front bonnet stripe and the red wing mirrors and I just think it sets the car off brilliantly. So that's pretty much it from the front end. We did experiment with this tint on the headlamps but it, it just didn't quite work for me. Let's go around the side of the car because the side profile, the stance of the car has changed a huge amount and it is exactly what I wanted out of the work that we've done. Okay, so a few things on the, the side cosmetically first. We've got the joint B-Road Hunting Club and Petrol Ped logo. I really like that. Any member of the B-Road Hunting Club has this stag placed just here and we thought it might be a nice play to kind of merge our two logos together. Uh, other things is we spray painted the side scuttles here um, to match in. So it actually, I think that's turned out really, really nicely. And I put that tint uh, just on that lens there. Now I might well be changing the actual bulb in there because it's still got a kind of amber bulb. Um, so it still doesn't quite look right. But the big thing really is the stance of the car. So we fitted BC Racing coilovers. Uh, and the really interesting thing is I wasn't quite sure what the ride height I wanted uh, to, to look like. So when we got the coilovers, they come with a, a preset ride height. So we just put them on the car, put the wheels back on, let the car settle, and actually it dropped down to pretty much perfectly what I was after. It, it is quite low, and we'll talk about the impact that has on driving when we go out and about on the road. They don't rub, which was my number one criteria, and I just think they look absolutely spot on. They are fully adjustable coilovers as well on the top mounts. Unfortunately, the rear ones, because they go up into the wheel arch, because it's not a hatch, it's a roadster, it's very difficult to get access to those. So again, what we did with that, we just set them on their medium stiffness setting, uh, and that seems to work really nicely as well. I haven't done a full four wheel alignment. That is on the plan. I would love to do a string alignment, but we'll talk about that again when we go out on the road. Uh, Team Dynamics wheels, I've always loved these. Um, there was a big choice of wheels, clearly. What I love about Team Dynamics, they kind of got that motorsport heritage. I think they look fantastic. We went for anthracite as a colour. Uh, I wasn't too sure when it was suggested by Ed from B-Road Hunting Club, but I think it works really, really nicely. It just breaks up the black. My original plan was to go for black. Um, and they are a slightly different offset and a little bit wider. So these are 215 
wide and the car uh, the wheels that came off the car were 205 so just 10 mil wider a little bit more grip and then they are shod with michelin uh pilot sport 4 tires huge thank you to michelin for supplying the tires i love my old pilot super sports that i had on the car when i changed from run flats to those that was probably the the best bang for buck modification you can do to any car is to just take the run flats off uh, but these are really really mega and, and on the road there they've got a really nice feel uh, and on the track although it was limited track time when we go on track a bit later on in this film very impressive so yeah the the side stance of the car really really chuff with oh and then the last thing as well uh, we just de-chromed uh, the door handles uh, let's head around the back of the car a couple of little touches around the back of the car to have a chat about I haven't done a great deal on the back to be honest I guess the main things uh, we've de-chromed uh, around the rear tail lamp uh, again that's just with a gloss black vinyl they do do a darkened out version of these which are very very tempting I am having a look and there's a new you can also get these now with the union flag motif a bit like you can get on the new mini the on the uh, uh, F56 mini uh, we put the, uh, a new black uh, mini badge on there uh, and then I already had the GP2 diffuser um, and I think if you've got a, an R56, R58 or R59, I think that is an absolute must. I was really lucky that was already on the car when I bought it. I just think it sets the back of the car off brilliantly. And then the thing I have done since the last video is we've wrapped the chrome rollover hoops with the gloss black vinyl and I just think that finishes the kind of murdering outlook. There are a couple of little touches I want to show you inside the car and then we'll take this baby up the road for a spin. So internally, the main thing we've done is we've wrapped this kind of part of the dash here and it runs all the way along to over by the ignition where the key goes in and also these um, armrests with a kind of faux Alcantara. Relatively easy to do, you have to take the parts off but they wrap and you apply it a little bit like you would do a kind of vinyl wrap. Um, and that's about it really, so I think it's about time we took this car up the road because these modifications are all about how this car feels to drive, so and also magic sport button on how it drives driving on this new suspension setup the first thing to say is it is pretty firm the old suspension setup a standard mini jcw is pretty firm anyway this is stiffer and that comes with some challenges uh, potholes and major imperfections in the road do come through the car uh, reasonably severely but i knew that would be the case you don't lower the car and and have this kind of aggressive stance without having some compromises and I'm, I'm prepared for that uh, and I don't mind it too much and I knew that would be the case. You do however have to plan things like uh, speed bumps in a completely different way. In fact uh, the first time uh, Mrs Petrop had drove the car after we'd done the mod she was like wow there's a speed hump at work and I went over it a bit quick and it is quite jolty. Um, so you do have to be a bit aware, especially those ones that are in the middle of the road where you kind of put both wheels over either side. And this car is much, much lower. And the other thing also is the angle of attack at the front has been reduced a lot. So I even noticed a minor scrape in a fairly severe multi-storey car park uh, just at the weekend. So if you're going to lower a car, if you're going to fit uh, coilovers, that's something you might need to bear in mind. The ride comfort is going to be compromised and you do need to approach things like speed humps uh, and you know certainly things like uh, when you go onto a pavement and there's a fairly severe up uh, slope you're going to have problems potentially. Negative things to one side, once you're moving on and the road surface is okay the feel, the sharpness of the car is considerably better um, and what I love about this car anyway is you've got this really kind of pointy sharp feeling to it and it's just exaggerated now with the car being so firm and so aggressively set up <laughs> i'm never gonna get bored of that so let's push on a little bit shall we so i think the first thing 
if I can talk over the raucous exhaust, you can kind of feel the car on the tarmac a lot more. You can probably tell from just the attitude of my body in the car that, you know, that, that ride firmness does translate through into your seat bones, basically. However, it gives you a connection to the tarmac and a connection to the road that I really, really like. You have to hang on to this car so much more now with its extra power and a little bit more twitchy on the road, but I love that. It kind of elevates the character that this car had to a completely different level. And you can just... Traction control coming on. It's just got the best front end ever. And you can just... Oh, man. The, it just has a brilliant, brilliant feeling to it now. And on a sunny day like today, it just makes you want to go and explore as many B roads as you possibly can. And that is exactly why I kind of wanted to up the the suspension and, and the, certainly the tyres um, and the feeling of grip. So this bit of road is particularly nasty and particularly bumpy, perhaps the worst of British B roads. And it's all right, it is a little bit firm and a little bit jolty. But where this setup comes to life is on a racetrack. Now, luckily, just a couple of weeks ago, I was able to get Ruby on track when I was at the Delalio Track Fest. Um, we'd had a whole day driving some really lovely cars and right at the end of the day, we were allowed half an hour to take our own cars on circuit. Unfortunately, I didn't know I was going to be able to do that, so I turned up to the circuit with hardly any fuel at all. Um, and I literally did like one or two laps and my fuel warning light came on. Um, so I didn't get a great amount of track time. However, I did uh, have enough time just to feel the potential in this car setup. And the potential is a complete and utter track weapon. So. I just happen to be here at my beloved Goodwood. It is hugely busy today because they're in the middle of kind of festival of speed setup and so on. So let's go through here. And I've got some footage, but oh, sorry to interrupt this broadcast. We have the exhaust appreciation tunnel. <laughs> anyway. Let's roll the footage of the track day and then I'll tell you my findings of getting Ruby Roadster out on the motor circuit.
there you go. Great fun, I have to say, but a small insight. Now, the main difference I found out, maybe coming here was just an excuse to go through this tunnel a few times, to be honest. That's <laughs> so childish. The main thing I found out was the the, the lowered ride height, the firmer suspension, there was very little body roll, and that basically meant I could carry so much more speed through the corners than I would have normally been able to do uh, before. The other interesting thing was, it wasn't until I kind of got her on track, because I realized that the only track time I'd had in Ruby before was when she was running run flats. I never actually ran the Pilot Super Sport tires uh, on a track, even though they were super impressive on the road. So. There was a big kind of step change in my expectations of the car from the last time I tracked her to then, just based on, even just with the new tires, it would have been different, but with the tires, the suspension setup, and the extra grunt, wow. Give me a half a day or a day on circuit and, and it would have been a very, very different story. like this it all makes sense it all just has turned this car into something that I've so so wanted it to be I loved it before but just listen to that <laughs> and you can get on the power and yeah a bit of traction brilliant noisy exhaust, exhaust button off um, there are however a couple of things that I think this car is going to need next and I've actually already started to have conversations about. I am still running the original clutch um, and the clutch has now done 52,000 miles. Now I don't drive mega hard all the time and I'm not feeling any problems with it but I think a clutch upgrade to deal with the kind of 400 newton meters I'm putting through it is something I'm going to need to look into. And at the same time, I'm also going to look into having a limited slip diff. I think those two things uh, will finally finish the car off a treat. So um, keep tuned to the channel because those things are going to be coming fairly soon, I think. But yeah, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the film today. Uh, if you have done so, please give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, Please subscribe to Petromed for plenty more content to come and for a very raucous and very fantastic Ruby. I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care. Drive safe. <laughs>